Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I am excited to bring you uh, an excerpt from a much larger video I made on the topic of Baroque ornamentation. Uh, and that video was actually made in collaboration with Tonebase. Uh, if you don't know already, Tonebase is this really fantastic website that brings you uh, lessons and tutorials from some of the world's leading classical guitarists, and actually some of my personal guitar heroes, really. <laughs> It also, by the way, if you use the promo code BRANDON-30, you can save 30% to subscribe and see all sorts of wonderful uh, content on there. Uh, check out the, the link in the description if you, if you want to learn more. So today I'd like to show you a clip uh, in which I answer the question, can we ornament the music of Johann Sebastian Bach? Often, I think guitarists are apprehensive about ornamenting Bach. They don't know if they're allowed, they don't know if they should. And I want to say, yes, you should. <laughs> we should treat Bach like any Baroque composer, in that, in this style, ornamentation is obligatory. However, what makes Bach a bit different is that he's very explicit in his notation. Often, he writes out ornaments in notes that would have been just referred to with a symbol, or perhaps even just implied by the melody. In fact, Bach is even hilariously criticized in 1737 by a guy named Johann Adolf Scheibe, who says, He writes out with precise notes all ornaments, all small graces, and all that one understands as good style of playing. And this deprives his pieces not only of the beauty of the harmony, but it also makes the melody completely unrecognizable. Now, that says a lot. Obviously, we, modern people, are happy, though. This gives us some insight into what they consider to be the implied good ornamentation practice in the Baroque period. So, to finish today, I thought we could take everything we've learned and apply them to the opening of the lure from the E major partita by Bach. Now, I'm playing this on the 13-course Baroque lute in F major, though, because I'm at 415 pitch, that actually means it sounds as modern E major, so feel free to play along. <laughs> We're going to start by looking at the violin version, which doesn't have much ornamentation written in, just two trills in the beginning. Let's start by just hearing how it goes without any ornamentation. Now you might notice I'm using a bit of swing, actually. The eighth notes, if played exactly as written, would be... But there's a concept called note in a gal, which means unequal notes or uneven notes. And this is kind of actually like modern jazz swing. Instead of going one and two and three and four and, we get one and two and three and four and, and this would be appropriate to use in this dance. Now before we add any extra ornaments, we have to be careful. Remember that critique from Scheibe about Bach writing out ornaments. In the beginning of the fourth complete measure, we have secret ornaments. <laughs> um, there's a cadence, sort of a dominant to tonic cadence modern terminology of 5 to a 1 chord, um, B major to E major in the original key. Bach ornaments this with an appoggiatura. So there's a little secret ornament. And in the second half of the bar, Bach takes this very simple 1 chord with a falling third in the melody, and he decorates it with an ornament uh, which is called a tierce coulee. It's essentially two appoggiaturas. Okay, now that we've searched for any hidden ornaments, we can add the two trills Bach writes in. Let's remember that we play them from the upper note. And now we start to get 
a better sense of how this is going to go. Now we could simply walk through the piece and try out the variety of essential ornaments and see what works when. Oh, I like this one there. Oh, this part's fine by itself. And we could just decide on which ornaments to play when and maybe even play it differently in each performance. But I do have a bit of a surprise. It turns out that later, after publishing this violin partita, Bach had adapted this work for a keyboard. And in that version, he added many appoggiaturas. And so let's see what that sounds like. So are we done? I don't think so. There's so much more room for ornamentation here. Uh, some ideas could be turning the appoggiaturas into trills. You could add extra appoggiaturas. Um, if you read a bit about this arbitrary ornamentation, Quance's second style, you could fill in the leaps. It could become... Why not? <laughs> Let's try an ornamented version on the guitar. <laughs> 